call Miss Gwen Hood. State your name for the record, Gwen, even though we know you. <laughs> My name is Gwen Hood. No, that's be My name is Gwen Hood, and uh, I am here to represent the Brooke County uh, Animal Welfare Alliance. Uh, and I live here in Morganton. Good evening, and thank you for this opportunity to speak. Uh, in front of you, you have a handout um, that I gave everybody a copy, uh, like this different colors, and uh, that is something that we placed last week with Lieutenant Massey at uh, Animal Control. Uh, we're also um, going to put those uh, with the Morgan Public Safety with Chief Rector and Vets offices and maybe some other more visible locations. Uh, the handout is for the officers to help aid them as well uh, to if they come across any families that need assistance. Uh, this is to try to offer another solution uh, instead of having to surrender that animal over to uh, animal control. We would uh, also like to bring to your attention and ask you to consider amending our current animal ordinance to include Charlie's Law. Uh, this is a petition that is circulating now. Charlie's Law will allow rescue organizations to pull animals that are deemed unadoptable uh, most, most of the times these animals are actually very adoptable. They're just really scared. Uh, and so sometimes there is a mislabeling uh, of a, an animal that is aggressive versus dangerous and just more out of fear. Um, this is an extremely urgent uh, change that is needed currently at animal control. Uh, every county around us do allow rescues to do this. Uh, and our county uh, manager and his staff have also included this in, in his recommendations. Uh, so we would like to work as our organization to help with this uh, particular um, situation and to help provide information constructive in helping to make this happen. So we would like to work together to uh, if we can to work on changing that and finally we would really wish to uh, commend our county manager and Kay and Lance uh, our county commissioners and I'm sorry that Wayne is not here I hope he's feeling better um, and also to Sheriff Wisnett for not only listening to our concerns but making real positive changes for animal welfare, especially for the animals facing euthanasia at animal control. We are moving ever closer to becoming a no-kill county. You have become champions. You have become <coughs> heroes for the animals. The Brooke County Animal Welfare Alliance, we're here to help you in this endeavor in any way possible. Our county officials make us proud and through Advanced Burke, we are truly becoming a county that is proactive, that is progressive, and most importantly, compassionate. And that is a county anyone would want to live in. It is with deepest gratitude and a heartfelt thank you to each of you for all that you are doing to save these precious lives. Thank you. Thank you, Gwen. Carla Wallace. Is it on? Okay. <laughs> I'm Carla Wallace. I'm with Partners for Cats in Burke County Animal Welfare Alliance. I would like to talk to you today about the cats at Burke County Animal Control. I'm the video person for the cats, meaning that I'm the one that is able to take pictures and videos of the cats, but only the ones that are deemed tame. I was allowed to video them as soon as they knew the cats were tame, which was working very well. 
It gave us time to network and to find them fosters or doctors. But it was changed with no reason given. Now I can only video them once they are deemed tame and available for adoption, which puts them urgent right away and makes it difficult on us. We would like to ask for that to be changed back to the way it was originally, to moving them into the video room as soon as they are tame. Also, on the dogs, we are allowed to video or take pictures of all of them. On the cats, we would like to request the same. To be allowed, currently, I can only describe the majority of the cats. They are housed in the big cat room in large cages. I go in and describe each one as best I can, but I feel this is not adequate. We can video the dogs, so why can't we video the cats? I could take a quick video of the other cats because I know taking pictures would take too long. So I'm asking for videos to save time for the person taking me back. I feel that this will greatly help many of the cats to be safe from euthanasia. A majority of the cats are not getting out due to no exposure. Many of them do or did have homes. Cats are very different from dogs. Dogs wag tails even in the worst conditions. Cats do not. They will cower down, shut down, and if messed with, they are often mistaken for feral, even if tame. This means owned cats who are afraid don't get a chance. As our, our animal control euthanizes all the ones deemed feral. I feel that with the, the dogs, or like with the dogs, that taking videos of the cats will help many cats get home to their owners. I'm constantly contacted asking me to look for cats, but honestly, how much can I do? A black cat to me and them can be very different. It is very hard to tell. With a video, they can see themselves and hopefully get more cats returned home or rescued. This is my goal today. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Carla. Miss Debbie Hawkins. Good evening. I'm Debbie Hawkins. I'm president of the Reason Program. I'm only going to take like 30 seconds of your time. Um, on behalf of Reason, I would like to thank Cadron, Lance Riddle, and Brian Steen for all of your hard work and attention in preparing the animal shelter proposal, in addition to all of the other items that you must attend to. We appreciate the county commissioners and the sheriff's department for your time in considering their proposal and for looking at ways to improve animal welfare in Burke County. Thank you. Moving on, item number 10 is our items for a decision. Uh, our first item will be presentation of the animal shelter information and options presented by Brian Steen County and manager along with other county staff. Brian. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the board and our, our public audience that are viewing this, uh, Kay and Lance are the ones that did the work and are best prepared to do a sh short presentation of, of what's been looked at and proposed to the board for consideration. Okay, a little background information. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, the chairman asked us to prepare a report on um, animal shelter, and these are our findings, and we're um, lovingly calling it the animal services recommendation. And I'd like to start off by thanking a few people who uh, helped us prepare our report. Thank you, uh, Scott. Um, obviously, the board and, and staff, um, various counties across North Carolina provided information. Uh, the Animal Advisory Board shared their survey data with us early. Uh, numerous animal advocates um, who are passionate about animal welfare uh, in Burke County, and uh, especially Lance Riddle, he would probably like to choke me on some days when we were working on this, but we we hunkered down and got through it. Um, these are some photos of the current um, facility uh, on Curtsy Drive, and it's built in the 70s, and it's dated. It's been well-loved. 
interior. Um, I'm just going to quickly paraphrase these. Uh, recommendations for for time's sake um, we are asking that the uh, commissioners appropriate at least fifteen thousand dollars to uh, spruce up the animal shelter to make some minor repairs cleaning painting electrical those third sort of things and that we do it within 90 days replace some outdated worn out office furniture um, and upgrade the computers and software and network uh, within the next 30 days um, so that they can, we can use social media. So we need to have our good, good computer system going. We'd like to um, issue an RFQ for a firm with extensive animal shelter building expertise and animal welfare experience to conduct a facility needs study to learn the true needs of a shelter for now and in the future. And then once the RFQ process is complete, we would hopefully at the April meeting ask the board to um, select a firm and appropriate some money for that firm. We uh, recommend that the county explore a variety of funding options for a new facility. Uh, we recommend, next we recommend that the um, staff work with the finance department um, to make sure that any contributions that folks would like to make that are fully um, accepted by the IRS. We would like to, um, and this is with regard to the organizational structure, we would like to recommend that the Animal Services Department be placed under the authority of the county manager's office as a standalone department, uh, that the sheriff's office continue animal control operations with the day-to-day -day, um, business of the, um, and the sheriff's office would handle animal control operations and the day-to-day -day operations of the shelter would be conducted by county staff. With regard to personnel, we recommend that the uh, Animal Services Department have three full-time employees, a director, a shelter coordinator, and one technician or some other comparable um, position. Uh, we recommend that a robust volunteer program be developed and implemented. Uh, we are not recommending that inmate labor be used moving forward. Uh, moving on to operations, uh, we recommend that the hours of the Animal Services Center be Tuesday <coughs> through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., that adoptions for public and rescue groups take place from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. daily and that uh, we cease the sale of animal carcasses as a source of revenue um, and that the um, animal services staff develop their standard operating procedures uh, within 30 days or less. Moving on to education and marketing that the uh, we're recommending that they use all forms of social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, Twitter to uh, let folks know that we do have animals out there for adoption and uh, hopefully decrease the euthanasia rate significantly. Um, we recommend that staff post pictures of these animals um, very often and, in, and engage the community by perhaps having an animal of the week um, with a short write-up and photo of the animal. Uh, social media should be used to inform the public about any events going on at the shelter or uh, changes in hours, that sort of thing. Um, yeah. We recommend that uh, 
and we've moved on to education and marketing, that staff work with groups such as Reason, Vets, and other foster groups to inform the public about any spay or neutering services <coughs> and events using social media and traditional media methods. That staff should collaborate with the Burke County Schools and Reason to expand our educational programs, uh, including presentations made at civic organizations and events like that about the importance of spay neuter events and uh, make resources available to them here are some low or no cost education marketing recommend recommendations um, one was k9 cop for a day I believe they were doing that out in kansas uh, we could and i hope we will do this feature adoptable pets at commissioner meetings um, and uh, animal services can partner with uh, county departments and municipalities to uh, advertise on digital signage and other areas to increase awareness of animal services, adoptions, and spay and neuter services. Um, we would like to uh, utilize billboard space on I-40 to get that message out about uh, adoptions and spay and neuter. We would like to reach out to local news media for free or reduced advertising for public service announcements or pet of the week features. Uh, we would like to um, partner with Reason, local vets, foster groups to potentially develop a uh, free spay and neuter day. And we would like to recommend that we hire a marketing firm to rebrand the image of the um, animal shelter, the animal services department, and the animal services center, and to promote spay and neuter education and services. Moving on to adoptions, um, we recommend that staff research home fostering opportunities, uh, that they research and evaluate current adoption fees to ensure that um, our fees are not hindering anybody from adopting an animal. We further recommend that uh, the re research the prospect of approved rescue groups pulling animals that have been deemed aggressive by staff to be evaluated by an animal, animal behavioral specialist. Again, on adoptions, we would recommend that uh, public and rescue groups take place from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. daily, and that a uh, trap, neuter, and return program for uh, feral community cats be implemented. And then lastly, what I'm now calling the legislative <coughs> section is that we evaluate um, any changes to the animal ordinance uh, to make it better, cleaner, clearer, and then to uh, particularly maybe look at that cat colony section to see if there's anything that needs to be changed or removed in regards to that section. Um, that's all the recommendations that we had, um, the, the request before the board today is um, there are three items in your packet. Uh, the first would be to uh, for us to gain um, input from citizens, animal advocates, and rescue agencies um, by creating an email address um, to receive that input and hold a um, staff facilitated workshop uh, within 90 days. Um, and to direct us to issue an RFQ, which is a request for qualifications for an animal shelter facility uh, needs assessment, and to appropriate up to $15,000 of general fund fund balance for refreshing the animal shelter. And that concludes my presentation, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Kay. Questions or comments for Kay at this time from commissioners? Mr. Chairman, if I may, um, I had a question on that facility study RFQ uh, cost. What is going to be the cost of that? Do we know at this point? Any idea? Other than advertising, it doesn't cost much to issue the RFQ. It's it's when you when you come back and and they you find one and then you work with them to negotiate a, a price. Okay. 
And another question I had was on page 79. Um, I talked to Brian just briefly about this a little yesterday, but the Hickory has agreed to pay an inbound fee, and it's up to 25000 I believe. And I just wondered, did we know how much they participated last year at this point? Does anyone know? Do you mean the city of Morganton? Yes. Um, they pay about ninety three or ninety seven hundred dollars, ninety seven hundred dollars a year. Um. Yeah. Um, I read with great interest the um, survey, and it's on page one twenty where it, where all that starts. Uh, but I was uh, delighted to see that. So many of our good citizens agreed that the county should not fund that uh, expense by themselves. And my, my question, I guess, how do we organize this to where we can allow or permit them to participate? And how do we do it in a form that we know before we do our budget how much money we're going to have to put up to make it work? So I don't know who, who would would find that out for us, but um, that um, certainly would, would would be a lot of help. And then, I don't know, we, I don't think any of us have got to the point, uh, Brian and I talked about that a little bit too, that, you know, how we construct this in such a manner that um, it's most efficient for the county and the taxpayers, and yet we conclude and, and achieve what we're after to achieve. And uh, one of the crazy ideas I had, and it's not too crazy, but anyhow, was that we do it like other jobs. We do it like a contract, and we provide what services we want, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and put it out for bids. The other thing is, is that maybe before uh, it comes to the animal control, it goes to any one of the volunteer search away, uh, companies or uh, entities, and they, if they can take them before you get involved and, and uh, adopt them somewhere or whatever, uh, it seems like that would be a big step in curing a lot of the problems that we appear to have with it um, but I, it's uh, I think this uh, animal control thing it's it's really a lot to read and absorb in here it's what is it 700 and some pages uh, it's a little more than that because we added some more reference materials since pre-agenda but anyhow um, it's there's a lot of good stuff in there so hopefully we can achieve what we're uh, what we need to do to make this a, an excellent county for animal control that's all I have thank you Commissioner Taylor any other comments or questions just uh, to address uh, address one of those in, in, in K you you and I've listened to some information about this but you know once we do the RFQ and we get an animal um, and get an animal shelter facility study needs assessment done, we, we depend on their needs, I mean, their expertise, because there's people that have duplicated this hundreds of times around the country, so we're not going to be doing this blindly. This is going to be somebody that involves professional veterans, uh, veterinarians, um, you know, all, all types of folks that, you know, we can bring in outside experts along with our community support and uh, get it done the correct way, the right way, the first time. Thank you, Commissioner Mowley. Anyone else? I want to close up with a few comments. When I came to uh, Brian, when the Vice Chairman and I came to Brian, I laid out some specific instructions what I wanted to see done. Uh, for you folks here in the audience today, this is not going to happen overnight. We have a, we have a road to follow, and it's going to be a meticulous road because I've laid out some specific instructions of how we want to see this done. It's going to be, uh, until we get a needs analysis, and, and, and the Vice Chair and I have looked at several companies that have done needs analysis, 
we don't really know what route we want to take fully at this time. As, as Scott said, we want to do it right the first time. Uh, in conjunction with the North Carolina County Commissioners Association, Brian and, and, and I, myself and Scott, we've taken some field trips. We've talked to, we spoke with a number of counties that have some great facilities, but this is my desire. I want Burke County to be number one when we finish. I like being number one, so that's what I want it to be, and I want people to emulate what we do here in this county. We know what your desires are, and we've listened closely and I think you understand that our desires are just like yours. But I do want you to understand that this is going to be time consuming and it's going to be a meticulous process. I, I can't say enough for Brian and Kay and Lance what they've done to, to issue an 800 and some page report. Uh, Kay and I were, were corresponded sometimes after midnight <laughs> at night on the computer trying to get this report ready as quickly as we could. So please be aware that until we get that needs analysis, we really, that, that will paint the picture for us to give us that roadmap that we need to follow. And with your input, when these meetings do occur, and we have these civil meetings and get your input, that's what we want. And that's the, that's the direction we're going to take. I'm not going to say anything else. I'm, I'm, we'll entertain a motion at this time. Two, three, and four. Mr. Chairman, I move to solicit feedback from citizens, animal advocates, and animal rescue agencies. A uh, special time limited email address will be created to receive input from citizens on the recommendations. Further, a staff facilitated workshop with focus groups, which will be animal advocates and rescue agencies, will be held within 90 days. We will direct, uh, second direct staff to issue a request for qualifications for an animal shelter facility study needs assessment. And third, appropriate up to $15,000 of the general fund, fund balance for ref refreshing the animal shelter. All right, gentlemen, you've heard Scott's motion. All in favor signify by raising your right hands. All opposed. Ladies and gentlemen, that passed unanimously four to nothing. Thank you so very much. You can clap if you want to. <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity to have worked on the animal services endeavor. Um, it was really interesting and uh, kind of nice to do something a little different. That's all I got. As we close tonight, I want to remind everybody looking in uh, by TV or what other means to please have your pet spay or neutered. Also, please pick up one piece of trash and don't throw any down. If you would, we were trying to keep Burke County clean. Is there anything else that needs to come before the board? If not, I will call us in recess until we meet on March the 29th for our legislative breakfast meeting.